Hi everybody, welcome to the Lexus Virtual Classroom. And today I am in this beautifully revised 2022 Lexus GX. In this video, you're going to see footage from the 2021 and 2022 GX models, just so I can make sure that I try to cover everything that's available on this GX. If you'd like to explore the video from start to finish, go for it. But if you want to break it into bite-sized chunks, you can do that too. Look below the video, you'll see a description, and then you'll see the words show more. Go ahead, click on show more, you'll see an index with timestamps and different subject matter. Just click right on the timestamp and it will jump you through the video to that particular feature that you'd like to learn more about. So if that's an easier way for you to digest all of this information, please make sure to use it. Some people will say that not a lot has changed for this vehicle, and that is true. However, there are some really great new updates that we have all been waiting quite a while for, like the Generation 11 navigation system. In fact, now navigation is standard equipment on this vehicle, and the system is going to include standard Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. There are a lot of changes and updates to this whole center stack. There are three different layouts for the four-wheel drive and and suspension features depending on which package you select for your GX. And all of the controls have been moved from the lower center console up to the center stack. The great news about that is it makes it really easy to use them and it makes it less possible to accidentally activate four-wheel drive features that you weren't intending to use. The only negative that I've experienced so far is that it's easy to reach for the downhill assist control dial instead of the volume control dial when you're wanting to adjust the volume on your audio system. But once you know that, you'll remember. Plus, it's always easier to control the volume for your stereo with the buttons on the steering wheel. All GX models have full-time four-wheel drive capabilities. The four-wheel drive mode selector with active traction control will be located on the right-hand side. The premium package will include downhill assist control, and the four-wheel drive controls. On the luxury build with the sport package, you'll see this layout with downhill assist control, the adaptive variable suspension controls, letting you change your ride feel from sport, normal, or comfort mode just by pushing the button to select the drive feel that you prefer. Rear height control air suspension, and of course, the full-time four-wheel drive mode selector. On the luxury build with the off-road package, the downhill assist control feature is upgraded to crawl control with multi-terrain select, giving you traction in extreme off-road conditions up and downhill. The adaptive variable suspension height control, and of course, the full-time four-wheel drive selector on the far right. And the newly revised multi-terrain panoramic monitor with views for on and off-road driving. Very happy to have the power folding mirror option on the GX for 2022. Your parking sensors that are located on the front and rear bumpers of the GX are now standard equipment. A rear seat reminder has been added to the GX. If a rear passenger door has been opened, when you turn off the GX, you'll have a message to check the rear seat. However, if a rear passenger door has not been opened, you will not see the check rear seat message. Let's start with your smart access key. You can lock, unlock, and even open the glass on the rear door. You also have a panic or emergency button. That's of course gonna make a really loud noise. If you use this to look for your vehicle in a parking place, go ahead and make the change. Use the Lexus app. The Lexus app has Lexus remote built right in. It even includes the ability to locate your vehicle in its last parking place. The Lexus Informed subscription service does rely on a cell signal to locate the vehicle, but once it's found it, just zoom in for more detail. 
The new GX comes with a complimentary trial period for all compatible Lexus Inform connected technologies. To unlock and lock the GX with your smart key, make sure you have it in your pocket or in a bag. As long as it's on your person and in range, you're all set. To lock a GX, you need to make sure that you're looking at a door handle with an indentation. Touch the indentation, you're going to get a flash of the indicator on the mirrors and to hear a beep and hear the lock go into place. Keep in mind that the rear doors on the GX do not have smart access, only the driver's door and the front passenger door. That means that when you go to unlock, just by putting your hand in the door handle, you might want to take advantage of the customized settings to allow all doors on the GX to unlock when you put your hand in the driver's door handle while you have the smart key on you. I'll show you how to customize that feature when we go over the setup menu. To open the rear glass with the smart key, you have two different options. If you want to push the button on the key, just push and hold. It'll pop open and then you can manually open it the rest of the way. Another option for opening the rear glass is just to keep your smart key in your pocket or your purse. Push the black button on the far left-hand corner it's going to release the glass and then you can open it again, nice and simple. So while we're learning about how to access the rear cargo area, make sure you note that there's a lock and unlock button right by the door handle. So you would want to click the unlock button before you open. And then it just swings out nice and easy, and you have plenty of room to access the cargo area. A detail about this rear door is that it has the ability to lock and unlock so that it doesn't blow in any kind of wind. To lock the back door stopper, simply make sure the rear door is fully open and twist down to the lock position. You'll notice that the door stays in place. To unlock, make sure the back door is completely open. Otherwise, it won't release. Simply push to open the door, and then you can twist up to unlock the back door stop. Two storage compartments in the back door. Your spare tire tools are located in the left-hand side. To open, just twist both dials to the right, and then you'll have access to the tools inside, including your wheel lock key. Your wheel lock key is how you would unlock the locking lug nut on all four wheels. Very important to hold on to. When you're finished with it, just snap it right back into place. If you need to remove the tool tray, tilt it forward, and lift up. It has two large pegs that hold it in place. In typical Lexus fashion, there are all these little details of sound dampening material that are designed to help make sure that your GX is as quiet as possible when you're on the road. So you wanna take good care of this material and just be careful when you're putting things back together. You'll want to lean the tool tray slightly forward and then you can push it back and twist the dials to the left to secure. But make sure that you're aware your jack is actually tucked inside the back left panel. The larger panel on the right might hold the bracket for your front license plate. Once you've installed that on your vehicle, you have tie downs to store any other items. It's also a great place to store your cargo net. Roll it up and it's got its own little cubby on the left hand side. When you open the back of the new GX, you might see your first aid kit Velcroed right to the back. And that's awesome to let you know that you do have the new hard shell first aid kit on hand. However, if you would prefer to store it out of the way, 
here's how. We used to recommend storing the first aid kit here, but now it's got this great hard shell, which is fantastic, but it doesn't fit quite as nicely. Let me show you where it does fit. There's a very handy storage spot for the first aid kit just on the left-hand side of the rear of the GX. Fold down the left side seat to more easily access the storage cubby. The new hard shell case first aid kit fits right inside. Your cargo net is secured top and bottom. So to remove it, just unhook at the top and then move the carpet cover for your carpeted cargo cover and you'll be able to disconnect the clip from the D-ring. Lay that D-ring flat and then you can tuck that cut carpet piece back into place. We'll do the same thing on the bottom right hand side and then you can store your cargo netting and now your cargo net is safely stowed. At the back on the right hand corner, you have a 120 volt AC outlet. I always recommend that you secure the third row seat belts. So there's a clip here and you might think that you just slide the belt in but there's an additional step that will help keep everything from rattling around. Raise the seat belt clip above the side hook, and there's a small hole that this fits right into, and now it's much more secure. So if you're driving, especially if you've decided to go off-road or something, you wanna make sure that Everything is nice and quiet and secure. The tonneau cover or privacy shade can be removed. It's just on a tension rod and you can slide either end toward the center and then carefully remove it. To bring the shade in place, use the center handle, pull toward you, and then lift up so that you can catch each clip on either side of the GX. If you are looking for total privacy in the rear cargo area, make sure that you also secure the pieces that attach to the rear headrest. So they have clips that will click right into place. So you'll notice that I am in the back seat because I'm short. So for me, it's a lot easier to do this from the second row. The middle one also has a clip. What you'll need to do is raise the headrest just enough so that you can see that center post. Now let's just put the last section in place. So just so you can see what we've got going on under here, we have clips and we have posts on the headrest. Just snap into place. And now your entire cargo area is covered. Two last details about these clips. If you decide to fold down your second row seats, you need to make sure to detach the clips. And then you can fold your second row seating down. Another item to notice is that the strap length is adjustable. If you have the seats farther forward in the second row and you need a little more room, just unsnap each strap piece so that you have a longer tether. To remove the privacy shade, disconnect all of the tethers, pull toward you, lift up, 
and then slowly release. If you're tall, you might be able to just reach into the back of the GX and remove the tonneau cover because you don't have a large tailgate that you have to lean over because of the way the door is configured to swing out. However, if you're like me, not so tall, you have to climb in. So climb in, pull toward you, and then it will come away. Make sure you're aware that these are spring loaded. So when you pull, it comes toward you, but when you let go, it goes right back. You want to be careful when you're removing your tonneau cover so that you don't scratch the inner surface of your GX. You'll notice straps on either side of the rear cargo area. In the owner's manual, you'll see that the rear straps are used for storing the tonneau or luggage cover. Here's how to do that. Secure the hooks. That means if you've unsnapped the strap, you'll want to snap it back together and tuck those ends underneath the Velcro. When you're going to store your tonneau or luggage cover, make sure to follow the directions to make it more compact. You're looking for the lock release, which is located here. You want to push that in and slide to the end until you hear it click. And then if you have a retractable section on the other end of your cover, repeat the steps. Depending on whether or not you have an independent rear air conditioning system, you'll have an adjustable end on either one or both ends of your luggage cover. Make sure that you can see the lock mechanism on the end piece when it's completely retracted. Otherwise, if the lock mechanism isn't visible, you can slide it open. Now it's secure and locked in place in its most compact form. Now you can connect the Velcro to attach the two sections of the cover. Make sure that you've threaded your securing straps through the openings in the cargo mat if you're leaving your cargo mat in place when you store the luggage cover in the vehicle. I found that laying it down with the largest side, which is the main cover side, the side that pulls in and out, laying that down and then folding over the small section, the section that actually connects to the back of the headrests, have that piece on top. Then, because the ends have been in place, you can see our locking mechanism visible. We can use the straps to secure the cover. And then you'll repeat on the other side. And this is how it looks when it's stored in place at the rear of the vehicle. Keep in mind, when you do store the tonneau cover or luggage cover in this manner, you need to make sure that you're not placing any heavy objects on top of it. So what I've found is that most guests prefer to store the cover outside of the vehicle if they are not going to use it for an extended period of time. And then it also frees up the straps to store your cargo carpeted mat in case you would like to roll up that cargo mat and put your third row seating into place. Keep in mind, it does not say that this is what these straps are for in the owner's manual, but I have found working with different guests who drive this vehicle that they like to use this option. So let's access that third row. First step, remove the tonneau cover, cargo netting, and remove any cargo mat that you may have. If you have an all-weather cargo mat, Unless it's in sections that will accommodate the seats to fold up or down, you want to remove it. So climb in or lean in. Just know that when you release this lever, you can't come just part way. You have to come all the way open 
to release and then the seat will easily pull into place. If you just need to do one seat, you can leave the other down as cargo area. Next step is the seat bottom cushion. You're going to pull from the center, lift up and click into place. Final piece of the puzzle, headrest, nice and simple. When you're ready to put the seat back down for cargo room, you'll pull the strap on the shoulder to release the headrest. And be aware, it comes down pretty quickly, so you wanna make sure that no one is in the seating area when you do this. To release the seat bottom and seat back, we just use that back center handle release. Lift all the way up. The seat cushion has already retracted and then you can drop that third row seat right into its storage place. And then repeat on the left-hand side as needed. A great way to access the third row is through the second row, especially if you open from the right-hand passenger side. If you take a look at the image that is on the handle, that is for quick access to the third row. So you're not completely folding the second row seat flat. Just lift. And then you're able to slide and have access to the third row. This is a great way to position the third row seats if you prefer to do that from the inside. Just lift. Push the seat back in place, reach for the center seat bottom cushion, pull toward you until it clicks in place. And then just lift up the headrest. Now we have our third row secured. You can just easily replace that second row passenger seat. Push the seat back toward the third row, slide until it locks in place on the seat track, and then you can adjust how much space they have with the bar underneath the seat. Third row passengers can also slide the seat forward with this handle. To fold second row seats flat, use the release at the shoulder of the seat. The right hand side seat has the right side and the center all in one movement. You could separate the center section if you wanted to create a pass through just by using the handle at the back. That's a great way to create a little space between siblings perhaps. If they're small enough, they can even hop in and crawl over and then head back to a booster seat. You may have noticed the tether connections for second row car seats. There are tethers located on all three second row seating positions. To reveal the attachment points for car seats in the second row far right and left seating position, you're going to pull the Velcro open, and then you'll see in that felted liner, there is an opening to attach your car seat or booster seat based on the manufacturer's recommendations. It's nice to attach the car seat and maybe even put a pad down to protect your seating so that when your kiddos outgrow the car seat, you can just tuck this piece right back into place. And that helps to keep French fries and Legos from disappearing for all eternity. 
While the seven passenger configuration has tethers on all three portions of the second row, the six passenger version of the GX with captain's chairs features tethers on the backs of both second row seats and the right side third row seat. Front and second row seat belts can be adjusted for height at the shoulder point. Just push the release and then slide until it clicks and is in place to accommodate a more comfortable position, depending on your height. Pull the center armrest down for cup holders. And pop out side cup holders with the captain's chairs configuration. To keep passengers comfortable in the second and third row, make sure to open the vents. One on either side of the second row and third row. Second row climate control, depending on how your GX is equipped, you can have heated seats on the right and left side seats, high, low, or off for the right side, high, low, and off for the left side. You can also adjust fan, temperature, air flow. If you take a look at the display, you'll see it cycle through the airflow mode. You can increase, decrease, increase fan, decrease fan, let the fan take over itself in auto mode or completely turn the system off. If you don't want to control the system from the second row controls, because maybe you don't have anybody in the back that's old enough to manage that and you want to do it from the front, you can do that just by pushing the rear button. And I'll show you all those details in just a few moments. Second row passengers also have two USB ports right at the bottom of the center console. personal lights, and this second row lighting also turns on when a door is opened. When you first get your GX, make sure to adjust the seat for your most comfortable and safe driving position. You'll notice that there are indicators on the side for each of the front buttons. They're also housed in a recessed section of the seat panel. That indicates that these seat position adjustments are going to be part of your driver position memory. Your lumbar is not connected to driver position memory. Your steering wheel is going to be adjusted on the toggle on the left-hand side of the steering wheel. It will move up, down, to you, and away. Once you have your steering wheel in place for your driving position, you want to adjust your side mirrors. The mirror adjustment is located just underneath the air conditioning vent on the left-hand side. Toggle to the left, and then you can use the touchpad to make any adjustment that you need. Do the same for the right-hand side. After you've saved your seat, steering wheel, and side mirrors, it's time to save your driver position memory. Push the word set, let it go, and driver one or driver two. Then if someone drives your vehicle or makes an adjustment to your seat, just push your number to recall your positions. If you'd like to save a new position, make your adjustments and then push set, let it go, and your number. And then those new positions will be saved. Your mirrors also have the ability to tilt in reverse. This is very handy if you're trying to back out of a tight parking place. To make sure that your mirrors tilt down when you put the GX in reverse, just toggle either left or right. It doesn't matter which way you have it. Both mirrors will tilt in reverse. Let's take a look at how that works. I'm going to shift from park to reverse and you'll see that the mirrors have tilted down. To program the position for the tilt in reverse, make your selection of either left or right, 
shift into reverse. Once the mirror has adjusted, make additional adjustments if you really need to see a particular area. Once you've got that line of sight the way you want it, shift back into park. And that position has now been saved. Shifting back into reverse, and that's my new memorized tilt and reverse position. If you don't want the mirrors to tilt and reverse, just toggle to the neutral position. So right in the center where it's flush. You'll notice they're already making their adjustment. Now from part to reverse, and they don't move. Very happy to have the power folding mirror option on the GX for 2022. If you need to fold the mirrors in, just push to the right. When you need to open them, just toggle back to the left. We can adjust the brightness of our instrument panel, just pushing up to make it more bright, down to make it more dim, our odometer and trip meter button will cycle through our odometer. Trip A, trip B. How many miles you have until your next oil change? A blank screen and back to odometer. If you'd like to clear or zero out trip A or B, just select trip A or trip B and push and hold. The GX now offers an updated panoramic view monitor with views for on and off-road driving. When you're in park, there are two view options. A see-through view that zooms out to an overhead perspective or select the full overhead 360 view. You can play and pause and even select your preferred color. If you shift into drive and your panoramic view monitor does not turn on automatically, press your view button. This is your normal 360 camera view when you're in drive. Just select auto by clicking on the word auto to allow the system to turn on automatically when coming to a stop or driving at low speeds. You can zoom in at the front or rear of the vehicle on the right side overhead view. When you turn your wheel, you'll be able to see dynamic lines for the intended path. This is customizable. If you'd like to turn those lines off, just click on the settings icon right on screen, shifting into reverse for your full rear view with the yellow dynamic lines showing the turn angle intended path. Your 360 monitor view will also change when you shift into low four. Remember to be in neutral, push the bezel in and turn to the right. You'll have a 360 monitor view that is ready for off-roading. You have your side views and a view that's like looking through the undercarriage. Moving down on the left-hand side. If you have a blank button, not to worry. That's just for a feature that happens to not be on your vehicle. Our first button is for headlamp washers. Just give a push and your headlamp washers will engage. When we push the traction control off button, we get an indication on the dash. To turn on automatic high beams, just press the button. Make sure your headlights are in auto or on, and you'll see that your auto high beams are active. At the top, moving from left to right, you'll see your fog lamp indicator, low beam headlights, and automatic high beams. To manually operate your high beams, just push the headlamp stock forward and you'll see the auto high beam indicator change to the blue high beam icon. If your GX is equipped with a heated steering wheel, push the button and the light will come on to let you know that the heating element has been engaged. That's going to heat the leather portion of the steering wheel. Moving down on the left hand side, you'll notice your fuel door button and the manual release for the hood. 
coming all the way down to the foot pedals, make sure that you know that the GX has a foot pedal emergency brake. Your headlamp stock is located on the left-hand side of the steering wheel. Your selector is on the end. Dial to the bottom to turn everything off. Up to auto for your headlights to function automatically. Your daytime running lights or parking lights. And all the way at the top would be your low beam headlights. But leave it on auto and they'll come on for you as it starts to get dark and they'll turn off approximately 30 seconds after you've locked your GX. If you want your fog light to come on automatically when you've turned your headlamps to auto mode, turn the selector dial up to the fog light symbol. If you manually turn your headlights on and your fog light is selected, it will come on as well. Windshield wiper controls are located on the right hand side of the steering wheel. You'll notice that the position of the stock controls the function of the wipers. If we lift up to the top, you'll have one swipe for mist. That will automatically come down to the off position. Auto means you have rain sensing windshield wipers on your vehicle. Come down one click from off to be an auto then you can adjust the sensitivity of the automatic wipers with the dial. Less sensitive means it will take more water to engage the wipers. The most sensitive, it will take less water. Come down again for low and at the very bottom for high. The final stock on the steering wheel is for cruise control. Follow the arrows, push in to turn cruise control on or off, push down to set or to decrease your speed, push up to resume or increase your speed. You can cancel by pulling toward you or tapping on the brake. The system will tell you that radar is ready. Once you've set your speed, you'll be able to adjust the following distance with the button on the bottom right-hand side of the steering wheel. Think of this as a buffer zone. You have a long-range buffer zone, a mid-range buffer zone, and a close-range buffer zone. If you would like to use traditional cruise control, instead of pushing and releasing to turn on, push and hold as it indicates on the stock. When you push and hold, it will switch from radar cruise to traditional cruise. Let's move from right to left on the steering wheel and let me explain what each button does. This is our following distance as we just discovered for cruise control. This is our lane departure alert system. It is speed sensitive. It activates over 32 miles an hour. These buttons operate the information display in the center of your dash. We use the up, down, left and right arrows to navigate across and down the multi-information display. If you need to select something, you wanna make sure that it's highlighted and then push the dot in the center to accept. If you've opened a menu and you'd like to go back, push the go back button. If you'd like to shortcut a favorite screen, you can link it to this button. Let's take a closer look at how that works. When you start to operate the arrows moving either left or right, you'll see it scroll through all of your information screens. Let's start with information. You'll see an eye right at the top. In just a few seconds, that will fade out and then your outside temperature will come back. You'll have three screens of different types of fuel economy information. 
the most popular is cruising range. So this is showing you roughly how many more miles your vehicle has before you need to go get another tank of gas. You have an eco indicator. If you would like to have an indication for driving in a fuel efficient way, it will pop up automatically. You have a digital speedometer and a sway warning. The sway warning is attached to your lane departure alert feature. If the lane departure alert system has given you multiple corrections in a row, that's when you'll see the sway warning appear. Lane departure alert corrections would happen if you are veering out of a lane without having your blinker on. Arrowing down, we have a blank screen, so you always have an option to have less information if that's what you prefer. And then just continue to arrow until you're on the screen you like. Moving to the right, we have our steering angle position, tire pressure, including the spare tire. The GX spare tire is located under the rear of the vehicle. Clicking the right arrow, we are on our lane departure alert monitoring screen. If you have lane departure alert off, you will not see information here. When you turn it on, you'll be able to see the lane markers. The camera system mounted behind the rear view mirror is how the system looks forward ahead of your GX in order to identify lane markers. Once it's identified a lane marker, these lines will show up solid rather than hollow. If you get a vibration in your steering wheel, that is an indication that you have started to veer out of your lane without your blinker on. Arrowing to the right, we would have messages about service and even low fuel warnings. Our final screen in the multi-information display is our settings screen. LDA with that same icon represents lane departure alert. I've highlighted my LDA and I'm going to push the dot in the center of the arrows so that I can select and go in to this setting I can customize my alert style. Do I want an audible alert or steering wheel vibration? I can change the sensitivity, turn off the sway warning, and even customize the sensitivity of the sway warning. Now, to go back out, I have to use that go back button. So I'm going to push go back, I'm on my main settings menu, and I can come down to turn on and off blind spot monitor. The blind spot monitor will light up in your side mirrors. If the system detects a vehicle in your blind spot, if you have your blinker on, the indicator will flash at you to attempt to get your attention so that you don't move over while someone is in your blind spot. Moving down to PCS, which is our pre-collision system. If we open this menu by pushing the dot in the middle of our arrows, we can turn the system off or on and we can adjust the sensitivity. But if you are in a circumstance where you need to turn it off, we wanna make sure that you know how to turn it back on. Also note that if you turn the GX off with the pre-collision system turned off, it's going to turn itself back on automatically the next time you turn on the vehicle. Pressing go back, we have parking assist. Those are the sensors on the front and back bumper that activate when you get too close to something, generally at about three feet away. Vehicle settings. This is typically where a technician would come in and make adjustments after a service. Meter settings. You're able to modify the language, Spanish or English, for your display. Coming back, you can change the units 
from miles or kilometers, depending on where you live. This is where you can turn that eco indicator off if you prefer. And our switch settings allows you to customize a favorite screen. I'll show you that next. If you need to restore your default settings, just select default settings. Once you've identified your favorite screen, go ahead and save it to the shortcut button. Just push and hold and then you'll be prompted. Would you like to change the screen? Arrow up and push the dot to select yes. Now, no matter where you move through the multi-information display, you can always just push the shortcut button and you'll hop right back to your main screen that you have saved. Keep in mind that feature is not available on all Lexus vehicles, so take advantage of it. On the left side of the steering wheel, you have up and down for volume for telephone and radio. The up and down arrows will move you through your presets on the radio and track on Bluetooth streamed audio or CD. The mode button will allow you to switch to AM, FM, satellite, Bluetooth, you name it. If you have an audio source activated, just push the mode button to toggle through. If you'd like to pause or mute your audio, just push and hold the mode button. Then push and hold again to play again. The button for voice command on the system is just push and release. You'll hear a beep and you can give your command. Telephone answer or hang up or ignore a call so it will go to your voicemail system. Coming down to the buttons on the dash on the right side of the steering wheel, just below the start stop engine button. ECT second, ECT stands for electronically controlled transmission. When you activate second start, it allows the GX to accelerate from a stop from second gear rather than first gear. This is helpful if you're driving in slippery or snowy conditions. When you push the button, you'll see second start appear on the right side gauge. Just press the button again to turn the feature off when you're no longer driving on slippery snowy roads. Coming down, you'll see the center differential lock button. This allows the GX to operate with a 50-50 power split. So you have 50% of the power at the front wheels and 50% at the back. Because the four wheel drive system on this vehicle does allow the power to move somewhat depending on the power required of the vehicle and road surfaces. It does tend to favor the rear wheels for a more luxury performance drive under normal driving conditions. But this feature will allow you to have better traction if you were off-roading and say your wheels got stuck, you would engage the center differential lock button by giving it a push when you push the button, you'll see the icon flash a couple of times and then it will light solid. When the light is solid, you'll know that the center differential lock has engaged. You can start to work your way out of the stuck situation that you might be in. Once your wheels are free and you're back on a flat surface, you can push the button again to turn the feature off. You'll see it flash and then clear. If you're ever in a circumstance where the light continues to flash and it does not go solid, that means that the center differential is not locking. Go ahead, put the vehicle into reverse or drive and just allow the GX to move forward or back if you have the space to do so. Once the center differential locks, it will show solid, or if it unlocks and the command clears, it will turn the light off. Under normal driving conditions, you want to make sure to turn off the center differential lock. 
it can feel restrictive and make it difficult trying to turn and drive at normal speeds. Moving from your steering wheel back up to the rear view mirror. The compass has been removed from the rear view mirror since navigation is now standard on the vehicle and your compass is located on the left top corner of your map. Now the auto dimming rear view mirror with built-in home link for garage door and gate operation is standard equipment. You also have the ability to turn on or off the auto dimming feature on your mirror. Most people prefer to leave it on. We don't flip mirrors any longer. Just let it dim for you when it senses that someone is coming up behind you and it makes it easier on your eyes. You have the ability to view your rear cabin passengers. You would take off this protective seal and you have a mirrored surface. If you continue to open this, you have a little cubby for sunglasses. Our dome lights are operated with the switch at the top. Just push all the way to the right for on in the middle for door mode so that the lights come on automatically when you open a door or to the left is off. Personal lights can be turned on with just a click. Our safety connect button. You do have a trial period for safety connect whenever you get a new GX. Moonroof operation, open or tilt just to pop the back of the moonroof up so that you can get some cool air inside. The microphone for voice command has been moved from the overhead console to the ceiling on the driver's side for better voice recognition accuracy. Taking a quick overview of this revised center console, obviously we've gone to this incredible touch screen and we don't have any of the hard buttons that used to frame the previous version of the screen on the GX. We also finally have a lot more control for the climate control system right at our fingertips. A favorite, of course, is going to be able to control your fan with hard buttons rather than having to go into the climate menu as was required in previous years. The controls for your four-wheel drive features are going to bookend your new large digital clock. We'll go into all of these features in more detail shortly. And all of this sits above a single disc CD changer and hard button shortcuts and controls for your audio system. Let's take a closer look. New for 2022, the GX receives the Generation 11 touchscreen high resolution 10.3 inch display with the standard navigation system. Taking a look at the navigation screen, keep in mind that you can operate most things by touching directly on the screen or use the touchpad. You can change map view just by clicking on the compass in the top left corner. There's a 3D mode, a 2D north facing mode, which means north is fixed at the top of the screen and the map won't turn as you turn, or the 2D mode that matches the direction that you're driving and the map will turn as you turn. It's going to most resemble a smartphone map. To search for a point of interest or an address, you can either click on the magnifying glass and use the on-screen menu for a go home shortcut right at the top of this menu. Keep in mind that we always recommend that you do save something close to your home rather than your exact house when you're setting your go home shortcut. And use the on-screen menu to select search, contact destination assist, which is a live operator, also part of your Lexus Inform connected services with a three-year trial, saved favorites, recent searches, emergency locations, search by address, point of interest, or contacts with address 
contacts with saved addresses in your Bluetooth paired compatible smartphone. That's the on-screen menu, but don't forget, you can always use voice command. In fact, you can voice command navigation from any screen. The first time that you launch the voice command system, you're probably going to hear this. Before you start, consider viewing the available video tutorials or voice training functionality. Select the Do Not Tell Me Again option if you do not want this reminder again, or just push the talk button to continue. The tutorials and training will always be available from the voice settings menu. When you're ready to clear this reminder, make sure to click Don't Tell Me Again, and then click OK. And now you can give your command. Get directions to Starbucks. Showing results for Starbucks. Select the one you want. Say next page for more items. Number one. To navigate to this point of interest, say go there. Go there. Starting guidance for a new route. All just by a push of the voice command button on the steering wheel. Notice that it said optimizing route and we see the cloud icon on screen. That lets us know that our dynamic navigation is active. The 2022 GX will come with a complimentary three-year trial for dynamic navigation. That's part of your Lexus Inform connected services. You'll have cloud-based overlays that will appear on screen where updates are available and automatic map data updates will occur roughly every six months. Start to drive or press OK. If you'd like to explore additional routes, select three routes. They'll be highlighted in different colors so that you can make a different selection if you prefer. To go back, simply push the hard button go back shortcut or the soft go back button on screen. You can also edit your route to add multiple destinations for a trip or delete a destination. You can also customize your route preferences. I highly recommend that you do this because especially if you want to use freeways or toll roads in your routing, you want to make sure that the system is not going to avoid them. For example, right now, avoid freeways is turned off. That means the system's going to route with freeways but avoid toll roads is turned on. And if you have a toll tag for your vehicle, you're going to want to turn that off so that you are not avoiding toll roads in your navigation. You can check your other settings for restricted roads, seasonal roads, ferries, and border crossings, and make sure you have the settings you prefer. Select OK, and your route will update if you've made a change. Just remember that to customize your route preferences, you only need to do it once, but you do have to have a route programmed in to access that feature. Click Turn List if you would like to see a turn-by-turn -turn overview of your route. Pushing the Go Back button or click Turn List on screen. Please proceed to the highlighted route, then the route guidance will start. Once you have a destination in, you can view map options, like having point of interest icons show. You want to make sure that your speed limit and traffic information is turned on so that you can see traffic flow patterns, green, yellow, and red. Green, you're moving. Yellow, it's slow. Red, it's bumper to bumper. If you ever see a black line along a major highway, it means that that section of highway is closed. Route Trace allows you to create your own path as you drive. That item is good if you're driving in an area that isn't mapped well, and you'd like to follow your path out. And it's going to leave little dots along the screen. This is great if you're in an area that is not mapped well or still has not been updated through the cloud source information. Turn route trace on, follow your path back out, and then when you'd like to turn it off, 
you can choose to save what's been recorded or clear the information from your screen. You can review route options. You can see an overview of your full drive. Come back and review those three route types and customize your preferences. You can also mute the navigation audio right on screen. Using the plus or minus on screen, your fingers to pinch or pull, or the touchpad to pinch or pull, you can zoom in and zoom out to have your preferred view. Notice that when we zoom in and out, you'll see the perspective information on the left side of the screen. This is as though you were moving a camera up above your vehicle. If you had a camera about 700 feet above your vehicle, this would roughly be your view. So if you want to zoom out to see more of an overall view, just bring that view up higher or zoom in. When you've zoomed all the way in, you'll no longer see the plus sign on the screen until you start to zoom out and then it will come back on. Most people prefer to stay in the 300 to 700 foot range just to have more street detail. You'll see route information such as how long will it take you to get there, how many miles away, and what's your arrival time. This is not clickable on screen. You can even delete your destination by clicking on the X and then clicking yes, or use voice command. Delete destination. Which destination do you want to remove? So if you have multiple destinations in, you have an opportunity to remove one or all, or use this voice command instead. Cancel route. Route canceled. And then it's gone, nice and easy. To enter an address, all you have to do is say the complete address, including city and state, with no zip code. Get directions to 12000 Katy Freeway, Houston, Texas. Here is the address I found. Would you like to go there? Yes. Starting guidance. You have a right side menu that will open the split screen on the right hand side. Your top icon will open an additional map that also has a customizable view. North up, 2D direction facing up, and 3D. To zoom in or out on the right side of the screen, you must use the plus or minus that you see on the bottom left corner. The right side map screen can't be zoomed with the touchpad or touch screen. If you do try to use the touch screen, it's going to pop up map information like traffic information. Would you want that showing or not? Clicking on the arrows at the top moves you to the additional screen, which is your large compass view. The next item, is a music summary screen. Trip information, trip history, and trip information overview. Keep in mind this information is also on your multi-information display that we saw before, but a lot of people like this layout. And then the right side screen for climate control. The most popular item to know about here is your three zone control. Anytime the passenger adjusts their temperature, three zone will turn on. That means you have a temperature for the driver, a temperature for the front passenger, and then the rear temperature settings can all be independent of one another. If you'd like to go back to a single temperature for the whole vehicle, you need to turn three zone off. 
and now all of the temperatures will match the primary zone, which is the drivers. When you're ready to go back to full screen, just click the full screen icon on the bottom right corner of the screen. If you've opened other items in another layout, for example, having audio on the left and the map on the right, and you'd like to go back to full screen for anything that's on the left-hand side that you've opened, just click and it'll take over full screen mode, nice and easy. To reopen the map, just push the map button down by your touchpad. Press menu to open your main menu. Another way to search for destinations is right through your main menu. You can either click on destination and it will take you back to the screen we saw before or slide your highlighter up and you have a shortcut for search, go home, recents, favorites, and contacts from your paired Bluetooth compatible smartphone. Let's take a look at the different controls for the audio system. The new radio shortcut button to open your AM, FM, and satellite controls, or media to stream audio content via Bluetooth from your paired device. On screen by highlighting audio, you can slide up and shortcut to AM, FM, satellite, if you had a CD in, disc would be highlighted. If you have a compatible device plugged into USB, that would be accessible as well. And Bluetooth with a Bluetooth paired device. Or click on audio to launch your audio menu on screen. Once you've opened your audio screen, you'll see a source menu right at the top your radio presets, you have 36 total radio presets available. They are highly customizable. You can save AM, FM, or satellite all together in any order. To save a radio preset, just get your station or channel playing using the touchpad or right on screen, push and hold until your station is saved. If you'd like to change a preset, you just override what's there. So you can select your source and use your tuner dial, or with voice command, get your new station playing. Tune to 99.1. 99.1 FM. Once your station is playing, push and hold, and then you have your selection saved. Radio Replay allows you to cache HD and satellite radio stations. HD stations will cache for up to 20 minutes and satellite stations will cache up to one hour. Think of Radio Replay like DVR for your sound system. Once the system has begun, once the system has begun caching or recording content, you can actually rewind fast forward, or come back to live. Select to open a station list, and you will be able to create a station list for the source that is active. So right now we're on FM, so we're getting an FM station list. If you were on satellite, you would be able to get a satellite station list. So if you'd like, you can click source and change your source right on screen. Come back to station list and choose AM, FM, or satellite. Since I had asked to change sources and selected satellite, that's what we've got showing now. And we can see all of the available stations from satellite radio. Coming down to options, you can customize the operation of the system with auto pause, which has to do with radio replay, Sirius XM tune start, allowing content on satellite radio to begin at the beginning of a song, HD radio signal for AM and FM turned on, 
and FM information, so GraceNote content showing on screen. You can even turn the scan feature off or on. Coming down to sound settings, this is where you can adjust the treble, mid-range, and bass. I always recommend doing this while you're listening to your content because you're going to be able to make this adjustment for each individual sound source. When you adjust your fader balance, that's going to apply to all sound sources. Your automatic sound levelizer usually comes on by default. That's going to make minor adjustments to the sound levels based on vehicle speed. Surround sound can be turned off or on based on your preference. There are additional audio and sound settings in the main setup menu, and we'll go over that in just a bit. Pushing the radio hard button shortcut operates like a mini mode button, and it will cycle you through AM, FM, and satellite. Or use the mode button on your steering wheel and cycle through all audio options. Coming back to our main menu, once you have a phone paired to the system, you'll have access to contacts, call history, favorites, and more to set up. And this is where you'll go to pair a phone to the system. Simply click Bluetooth. And if you've never paired a device to the vehicle before, it's going to ask you if you don't have a device paired yet, then the registered device and remove device items will be grayed out. To add a new device, click Add New Device. On your smartphone, open Settings, Bluetooth, and then look for the device name to appear on your smartphone. Follow the prompts to allow the pairing. Make sure to allow for contacts, call history, and show notifications for text messages. Once you have a Bluetooth enabled phone paired to the system, you'll have access to call history, favorites, contacts, a keypad, and even messages right in the shortcut menu. You can either select phone on screen or push the telephone off hook button on the lower left side of the steering wheel and all of your phone controls will be on screen. Don't forget the best way to make a phone call is always going to be by voice command. Call Ava. Ava has two phone numbers. Select the one you want. Mobile. Calling. You can also do texting through Bluetooth with voice command. Here's an example. Send a text to Ava. Same message to send to Ava Mobile. Hey Ava, how's it going? Do you want to send, hey Ava, how's it going? Yes. Sending your message. Now keep in mind, texting through Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, if your vehicle has those features available, is going to be much more robust. When you have multiple phones paired to the system, go ahead and go to Preferred Device Settings, turn the feature on, and then you can choose which phone and audio player you would like the system to default to when all of the devices are in the car and on at the same time. You can also add or remove devices from this screen. Inform App Suite content is part of your Lexus app. You can connect your Lexus plus Alexa compatible app here. Coming back to our main menu, projection is where we would connect to Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. The first step in giving permission for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto to connect to your vehicle is going to be to come to Setup and Projection Settings. 
And then you'll want to make sure that Apple CarPlay and or Android Auto are turned on. We'll go into the rest of the setup menu in just a moment. Simply plug in your device to the USB port. You want to use a data certified cord or the original cord that came with your device. Follow the prompts on screen to give permission to connect your device. Once you've given permission, you'll see projection change to either Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, depending on the type of device you're using. Just click to launch. For more information about Apple CarPlay, make sure to check out our Apple CarPlay Tech Tip Tuesday tutorial. The link for the video is above, and we'll do the same for an Android phone. Plug in your data certified cord, then follow the prompts for Android Auto. For more information about Android Auto, make sure to check out our Android Auto Tech Tip videos. Coming to the Info menu, you'll have trip information, traffic incident details. A favorite of the information menu is the weather. Weather is a feature that is only available on navigation Lexus vehicles. And because navigation is now standard on the GX, that means the weather feature will be on all 22 Lexus GX models. You have current forecast based on your location. The system is also going to tell you how long ago the last update was given. You can choose a three-day forecast and then select a day for more information. Come to a six or 12 hour breakdown for your area. You can check recently checked locations. And if you have searched for some other area, whether it's national or local, then it will populate the checked location list. The weather map is actually a Doppler radar map. It does have a certain amount of zoom out and zoom in capabilities. Not a whole lot, but a little bit, just to give you a broader idea of the area around you. And of course, you can see we have more rain in the area. Select go back either with the hard button by the touchpad or on screen. For vehicle alert history, you'll also be notified through the health report and Service Connect, another Lexus Inform connected service. This vehicle, of course, is brand new, so it doesn't have any service history vehicle alerts. Make sure to note that the e owner's manual feature is not currently available for the GX. There is a placeholder for this feature and the system, if you click on it, it is going to tell you that it's unable to access the media. That is because the media is not currently available, so it's not loaded onto the GX. You can just click OK to clear this message. It hasn't been determined yet if an update is going to become available for the electronic owner's manual, but if it does, it would become available through your Lexus service department. Make sure to stay tuned. Coming back to the main menu, we're going to skip over setup momentarily just to review climate. Taking a look at the new hard button shortcuts for climate control, you'll also see large digital displays for the driver and front passenger temperature. You can easily control the temperature with the toggle on either side. You can also control the temperature by voice command. Set the temperature to 72 degrees. Changing to 72 degrees. Notice that because we 
do have three zone climate active. We have our independent temperatures in the other zones. My voice command request only changed the driver's temperature. If I turn three zone off, our temperatures are once again synced and now I can control the whole vehicle's temperature by voice command. 70 degrees. Changing to 70 degrees. We have auto for fan speed. When you turn auto on, it's going to automatically adjust the fan speed based on the temperature you've selected and the current outside temperature. If you'd like to turn it off, you can't push it again to deselect. You just need to take over the fan, either off, less fan, or more fan. Your airflow mode will cycle you through all of the available airflow mode options. Face and feet, just feet, feet and defrost, and face only. Front defrost, rear and side view mirror defrost, and on or off for rear climate control. Where would you like the air to come from? Recirculating air, outside air, or let the vehicle decide. By selecting auto, auto is going to use the smog sensor on the vehicle as well as the vehicle's speed to determine whether or not to use recirculating or outside air. Our soft button shortcuts for climate, are a shortcut to the front screen, rear controls, and additional settings. This is another place to turn on or off three zone, your AC compressor, a windshield wiper de-icer, and the pollen filter. This is a strong filter that helps to clear the air in the cabin. When you select to turn it on, you're going to hear the fan speed increase. The system will cycle off automatically or when you're ready, just click to deselect and you'll hear your fan speed go back to its previous setting. Once you're in this screen, you'll notice that front and rear shortcut screens are available. If you haven't gone to climb it through the shortcut, you can get there by clicking directly on climb it and then open up your full climb it menu. And everything is there, front, rear, and your additional options. If you'd like to operate your climate control right on screen, you can just click to adjust driver and passenger temperature, airflow mode, and fan speed. Notice when an arrow disappears, opening rear controls, and they're going to look very similar. There's just one temperature. Now notice it's not clickable. Right now it's turned off. If we want to turn on rear controls, we have a couple of ways to do that. You can actually push the buttons at the rear of the vehicle, but if you've got little ones back there and they're not old enough to reach those buttons themselves, you can start turning on the fan. As soon as you turn on the fan, you're going to see all of the climate control information right on screen and you can continue to make additional adjustments. You can easily push the button just to turn it on, but if you'd like more options, press menu, come to climate, and shortcut to the rear controls. Then you can adjust fan speed, airflow direction, and temperature controls right on screen. Notice that we have an additional menu available. Press the double chevron button to open additional controls for the rear cabin climate. You can turn the entire system off, either on screen or by pressing the hard button shortcut. Turn the rear climate to auto and use the S flow or smart flow. 
that allows the vehicle to focus air where the passengers are. So if you have opened a rear door, you should have air flowing to the back of the vehicle. If you don't have rear cabin passengers, the air will be directed to the driver only or to the driver and front passenger if a front passenger is detected. Remember that double chevron button down by the touchpad? Anytime you see that symbol on screen, notice that it's not clickable. You're going to push the hard button shortcut down by your touchpad. This is an additional menu and in climate control, it's giving you on-screen soft buttons for the auto feature, turning off the entire system, another spot for AC compressor and three zone control. And coming back to our main menu for our last item, setup. Notice you have a shortcut for display customization. You can turn your screen completely off and then just press a button to turn it back on. Coming back into display, you can adjust the contrast and brightness for the general screen and even the backup camera view. Click to open setup. You're going to default to the general menu with clock right at the top. Make sure to select your correct time zone and then you can choose auto, on or off for daylight saving time. You can have your clock auto adjust by the GPS or make manual adjustments if you prefer. Push and go back. You can customize the language from English, Spanish, or French. You can again customize the display for general view or camera. Notice we have blue arrows. That's indicating that there is more to this list, but they're not clickable you can either use a flick motion on your touchpad or change screens by clicking on the arrows on the side or highlighting the slide bar, click down, and then slide your finger up or down on the touchpad. Click to select the page you're viewing. Coming to projection settings for permission for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You can change the button color theme from blue to gold. Your unit of temperature from Fahrenheit to Celsius. Keep in mind, this will only change the temperature readout on the weather display. This will not impact the outside temperature that you see displayed on your multi-information display on your instrument panel. That is preset from the factory and cannot be customized. You can change your unit of measurement from miles to kilometers. Auto change to screen allows the system to default back to the map screen or a previous menu if you haven't taken any action on a current screen. Most people prefer this setting to be turned off. Let me show you what it looks like when it's turned on. If we turn on auto change to screen and we select our map, for example, and then we decide that we would like to have some audio information. If we don't take any action on the audio screen, after a few moments, it's going to default back to the map. So if you're someone who likes to have the map view most of the time, this might be a setting that you prefer. If not, come back to setup, come down to auto change to screen, turn the feature off. This time, when you have your audio on, it's going to stay on. And when you're ready to come back to the map, 
simply push the map button. Coming back to setup and scrolling down. The selection sound, pointer sound, and error sound can all be turned off. You can also adjust the pointer sound volume and feedback force. This is the sensation, the pulsing that you might feel under your fingertips on the touchpad. I actually recommend that you consider turning feedback force off and I'm finding the cursor speed on this touchpad a little fast. So you may want to select slow. Now, if you've gotten very accustomed to the new touchpad, you could select normal or even fast. You just want to make sure that you feel like you're in control of the selection through the touchpad. Multi-touch command can be turned on or off. You can customize your keyboard layout, delete keyboard history, and allow the system to memorize your keyboard history for quick recall if you prefer. You can delete search history, and if you're selling your vehicle or if you're purchasing a pre-owned vehicle, go ahead and do delete personal data. That's going to wipe the system and make it all new. Software updates are typically done at your Lexus dealer through your service department. If software updates are available, make sure to check in with your Lexus dealer. For software updates, software update settings, Gracenote database updates, and software information, you can get more information at your Lexus dealer. Coming back to the top of our general settings menu and you'll see clock once again. The next item is Bluetooth and this is where you'll go to pair a phone to the system. Simply click Bluetooth and if you've never paired a device to the vehicle before, it's going to ask you if you would like to pair a device. You can choose to see a list of registered devices, add a new device, remove a currently paired device, or look at the detailed settings for the Bluetooth system. We do want to make sure that Bluetooth power is on. It should be on by default when you purchase your new Lexus. Coming to audio, under the common settings, you can turn on or off display cover art and prioritize the display of Gracenote information. Under radio, under radio settings, you can manage smart favorites. This is where you'll see a list of your satellite radio presets that are automatically set to cache your audio content. A really popular feature is the customization for the number of radio presets to have visible. You can have one page of six, 12, three of 18, 24 presets, 30 or 36. You can favorite FM genres and satellite radio genres. Coming to phone settings, you can connect a previously paired device Customize sound settings like the ringtone, ringtone volume, in-call volume, incoming email tone for phones that are compatible to receive email by voice in the vehicle, incoming texting tone, and incoming texting volume. Coming to voice settings, you can adjust the voice volume for navigation. You can also make customizations to turn on or off automatic navigation guidance, voice guidance in all modes. You can customize the voice recognition prompt amount to low, high, or even off. If you would like to train the system to better recognize your voice, take a few moments in a quiet place to repeat 10 phrases. Just click start 
and the system will take you through the tutorial. If you would like to learn from the tutorials on the vehicle, click Voice Recognition Tutorials and then explore all of the lessons that are built right in to your Lexus. You can customize the guidance tone type and turn off the voice prompt interrupt. That means there are certain times that the system is listening, you've already started the voice command process, and you don't even have to wait for the beep. It's going to hear you interrupt the prompt and then respond to your command. Coming to Vehicle, you'll have settings for maintenance reminders, you can even make sure that your dealer information is included so you can quickly call your Lexus dealer if you need to schedule service. Coming into vehicle customization. There are customizations for door lock, climate, and light settings. We have tutorials specific to each one of these items if you'd like to learn more detail. A key item that you might like to customize here is automatic door unlock by shift to park. Most people prefer to turn this off. That means when you put your GX into park, the doors will stay locked. Another good one to know about is select doors to unlock. This means you can choose to have all of the doors unlock when you put your hand inside the driver's door handle to unlock the GX. Or if you're frequently driving by yourself, let it still default to the driver's door only as an additional safety precaution. Climate settings can be customized by selecting the sensitivity for the smog sensor, and turning on or off the automatic AC compressor mode. Light settings, if you wanted to adjust your headlamp auto on sensitivity. Coming to other vehicle settings, you can adjust the driver's seat easy exit slide. So the amount the seat slides back wherever possible when you turn off the vehicle. You can change it from full, partial, or off. Coming down to the next page, in navigation, you can set a location for home, add favorites to the system, areas to avoid, and Detailed Navi Settings. In Detailed Navi Settings, an item that people frequently like to turn off is called Automatic Freeway Exit List. This is a pop-up feature that shows on the right side of the screen with freeway exit information, like gas stations, for example. If you would prefer that exit list to not pop up, just click off. You can also customize the map color and choose between three styles. After you've made any additional customizations, if you prefer to go back to the default, you can always click Restore Default Settings. Pushing Go Back. Selecting Wi-Fi. When you're ready to activate your Wi-Fi trial, make sure to first turn on the Wi-Fi hotspot and then follow the steps on the vehicle and your smartphone to set up your Wi-Fi. For a full tutorial, make sure to click the video link above. Coming to Inform App Suite, you can select to have the data usage message to display once per drive or not at all. You can also choose to have the phone automatically detected for App Suite functionality, or you can turn that off. You can also activate an enhanced mode for USB. Coming to traffic, you can save favorite routes to allow you to quickly check back for traffic issues at a future time. Just click yes. 
you can name your route, select a starting point, and select an end point. You can choose to avoid traffic manually, automatically, or not be prompted at all. All other traffic warning and traffic flow information is typically left on because it's not very intrusive and it just shows right up on the map. So it's very simple to use. Coming to data services, and you'll have download source options. Whether the data content is going to come from HD radio and the DCM or HD radio only. And that's absolutely everything from our main menu. We'll review all of the four-wheel drive features in just a few moments. Moving down to the lower console area, we have our heated and ventilated seats. Just turn the dial to make your selection. There are three different levels of heat and fan. Driver side, passenger side. You can also slide back a storage compartment. This layout remains the same. However, the USB ports will now power Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, as well as a 12 volt accessory charger. If you don't need to charge and you have an old MP3 player, you can play it through the headphone jack. That is your auxiliary port. Just push and the cover will glide back in place. The GX now receives the remote touchpad. The surface has been updated a bit with a beveled edge to the top buttons, and the whole area has been raised 0.4 inches, while the base of the cup holders has been lowered 0.9 inches, and this is to help minimize interference when using the touchpad. Moving past the cup holders to the armrest and storage compartment. You'll see three different levers for the center console armrest. You can lift the lower center and open for storage. You can slide the felted tray forward or back or pop it out if you have larger items and need more room. the right or left to slide the armrest forward to customize the position. The GX really originated as an off-road vehicle and Lexus decided to make it a luxury off-road capable vehicle. There are a few different layouts for all-wheel drive and suspension packages. H4 is the mode for high speed or normal driving on all types of roads. L4 or low four-wheel drive should be used when you require maximum power and traction for off-road driving conditions. Downhill assist control helps to prevent excessive speed if you're on a steep descent. The system operates if the vehicle is traveling under 15 miles an hour and you have shifted into low four. Just twist to the right to engage downhill assist control. You're going to see the light flash repeatedly unless you've shifted into low four. To engage low four, shift into neutral, push the bezel in and twist to the right. Once you're in four low, you'll see four low light up on the dash. You'll see vehicle stability control off. And because we turned downhill assist control on, you'll see that icon in green. The luxury sport package adds adaptive variable suspension with comfort, normal, and sport adjustments. This package also includes the available rear height control air suspension. Rear height control air suspension can be turned off or on here. To adjust the height, press the up arrow to go from low to neutral or high, and the down arrow to return to neutral or low. 
you'll see the indications on the dash. The light will flash until the full adjustment is complete. I've got a little piece of ribbon just taped up to the wheel well. Just for reference, to make it a little easier, hopefully, to see the movement when we raise or lower the rear of the GX. Right now, we're in the neutral position. When I push the up arrow, it's going to raise the rear of the vehicle to high. Once the adjustment is complete, you can manually lower the vehicle or based on the speed that you're traveling, the vehicle will raise or lower itself. Pushing the down arrow to come back to the neutral position. And down again for low. Using the low setting can make it easier to access the rear of the vehicle if you're loading cargo in and out of the back. Just keep in mind that there are some adjustments that happen automatically based on the speed that you're traveling in your GX. If your GX is equipped with the off-road package, your GX will have not only standard four-wheel drive capabilities, rear height control, adaptive variable suspension, but you'll see that the downhill assist control feature has been upgraded to crawl control with multi-terrain select. Multi-terrain select and crawl control are operated with the same dial on the left-hand side of the four-wheel drive feature panel. To operate the multi-terrain select and crawl control features, make sure the vehicle is on, all doors are closed, your seat belt is on and you engage low four. Shift into neutral, push in and turn to the right to activate low four and you'll see a variety of information on your screen. When you've activated four low, your panoramic multi-terrain monitor has a variety of different gauges that appear. When you're in reverse, you'll see side views, the rear view with dynamic turn lines, and two additional pitch or yaw sensors. You can change the center view just by touching on the settings icon at the bottom screen, shifting between a wide angle view or a fisheye style view. And it's really a matter of preference and how much visibility you're looking for at the rear of the vehicle. When you shift into drive, you still have the side view for better visibility if you're in tight off-road conditions, but you'll also have a low front view that actually peaks underneath the GX. You'll still have your additional gauges. You have the option to turn this feature on automatically, right on screen. When you initially engage the system, this item is going to be grayed out, which means you won't be able to click on it. But after a bit of a drive, you will be able to click on it and you can see a front and rear view. I'll show you that in just a moment. There's that see-through view showing you a glimpse of literally what is below the front end of the GX. When you're ready to disengage low four, come to a complete stop. You can check your surroundings. Front of the vehicle. Switch to a close up of the rear and below the rear of the vehicle. And when you're ready to disengage low four, shift to neutral, push the dial in and turn to the left. And your panoramic monitor will return to their normal drive mode settings.
When crawl control is turned off, the dial will operate the multi-terrain select options. To use multi-terrain select when crawl control is turned off, you're going to use your multi-information display to select the proper mode depending on the type of terrain that you're driving on. Turn the dial to view each terrain option. There are five different modes available. Mud and sand, loose rock, mogul, rock and dirt, and rock. To turn on crawl control, make sure all of the vehicle doors are closed, shift into neutral, and select low four for the drive mode. Push the on off button to engage crawl control and then the dial will modulate your speed. Crawl control will be operational when you are in drive or reverse. When crawl control is turned on, a mode that matches your road conditions is going to automatically be selected. Crawl control is going to operate at a fixed low speed on extremely rough terrain. You can change crawl control speed modes while crawl control is engaged. Just turn the dial. Crawl control will automatically cancel if you shift into park or neutral, shift out of low four operation, or open the driver's door. You'll see the crawl control icon light up and you'll be able to select the speed that you'd like to travel. Low, low, medium, medium, medium to high, or high. There are also different speeds that are recommended for different types of terrain. Make sure to check your owner's manual for details. Well, thank you so much for stopping by the Lexus Virtual Classroom today. Don't forget, if you have a question about your GX, make sure to leave a comment below and I'll be happy to get back to you. Thanks so much for liking our videos and subscribing to the channel. I really appreciate having you here with us at the Lexus Virtual Classroom and we'll see you next time.